I did a little bit of soul searching and something I've noticed that I always bring up, but don't ever go fully in on, is competition. Now I don't mean this in terms of competitive gaming where you'll have two different pro gamers face off against each other in a tournament or anything like that, although props to you for being better at a game than I ever will be. I'm talking about an actual competition when it comes to developing media. So I'm talking about the idea of when you have two video games or maybe two movies or entire genres that have to actually compete for your attention so that you will buy them, whether it's in movies, gaming, or something else. And I wanna do a better job on this channel highlighting actual examples of where competition exists, say smaller indie games that are coming out that are actually looking to shake things up if people are willing to give them the time of day and purchase them or try them out, or even movies or things like that that I think are interesting that maybe aren't the most mainstream. We can see a lot of examples of competition failing, where competition fizzles out and then games especially become very lazy. I've talked a lot about Rockstar Games and GTA Online recently in a couple videos, where you can see that there are not very many competitors for things like GTA Online. I suppose you could say in a general sense, there are things like MMOs, or just online open world games, but they're not GTA Online. And I know that you have games like Mafia that pop up every once in a while, but they're also not really the same experience at all. They're so different that they have their own crowd, even though there is some crossover. And because of that, because of that lack of competition, GTA Online has been allowed to get really out of control with microtransactions, stripping features, cutting content, ignoring their single player stuff. If you want an even more cut and dry example of this kind of thing, where competition fizzles out and games can do whatever they want, look at sports games. Sports games are constantly mocked for this, and if you enjoy them because you're the biggest sports fan of all time, of maybe you're like the biggest football fan ever, or football fan, you know, for the soccer fans who get upset that we call it soccer here in America, or maybe you are the biggest fan ever of basketball, you know, and you enjoy those sports, well, what do you do? You wanna maybe play a video game about them, right? Back in the day, and by back in the day I mean early 2000s, there were options for you. Say you were a big fan of basketball, well there were different options. There were things like NCAA, there were things like NBA, there were things like NBA Live. You know, so there were actual options for you to pick from. Same goes with football. There were more arcade experiences. There were more simulation-based experiences. It wasn't just Madden. It wasn't just NBA 2K right? There were actual options for you. Even something like Call of Duty back in the day, it actually tried to compete with other FPS games. It tried to compete with things like Halo. It tried to compete with things like Battlefield because not all gamers are millionaires. They needed to capture your attention and try and get you to buy their product and enjoy it. But over time, as these, I would say, companies and games, and even consoles, I would say, have become more established and almost like factions in a way where they have their set built-in audience and those people will buy it no matter what because they liked it from five years ago. Since that happened, those games have gone downhill. NBA 2K become less interesting, less creative, less options, less, you know, less passion, really. Same with things like Madden. I think Madden gets the biggest brunt of it with the criticism, where it just became something where it was like, well, we'll just kind of pump it out there. They'll buy it anyway. You know, and that's kind of the thing is these companies, they don't look at your commitment to the sport or your commitment to a type of game like COD and say, whoa, they're passionate. They like this. We should be passionate. They look at it as, look at this idiot. They're willing to buy anything we put out. Well, why, why should we try on that? These games need each other to push each other. And I didn't want to just take a look at that idea, but I wanted to take a look at that idea briefly with a very specific example, which is actually a game coming out in a couple of days, I believe on the 29th, which is called AEW Fight Forever. This is a wrestling game. And before people click off because they're not a fan of wrestling and they don't care, I wanna say this is less about wrestling and this is more about competition. This is more about a group of people coming in and trying to disrupt an industry that has gotten extremely lazy with their games and even with their product in general. And they're trying to make something passion filled, which I think really anyone who's into video games at all could appreciate. I haven't watched professional wrestling in any kind of repetitive manner where I've really followed it, 
probably since 2016, back when Dean Ambrose was the WWE Champion for a while. So it's been quite a while since I've followed wrestling. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that I'm the biggest hardcore wrestling fan ever who knows everything about it, but what I do know something about is industry and how it's important to actually shake things up and try and make something that matters in order to push other games and other people to be better. Something I thought was so cool about this game that's kind of flown under the radar of a lot of people is that a lot of people used to play WWE 2K or they used to play WWF or they used to play wrestling games in some, um, you know, passing manner, whether it was at a friend's house or they saw them played. And a lot of people have praised the creativity of some of the old games, like especially WWE, where there were a lot of fun mini games, character customization that was stupid but hilarious. I made Batman in WWE 2K14, for example, or maybe you would like to see my uh, very fun creation of Black Adam. And this character is about to change the balance of power of my video, so watch out. But something so cool about AEW Fight Forever is that they actually went back and looked at at these things that made wrestling games fun and interesting and they're wanting to bring those things back. AEW is actually a professional wrestling promotion which was founded about four years ago actually on January of 2019 by Tony Khan and a faction of wrestlers who go by the name of The Elite. Within months of the company's start, they actually landed a major television deal and less than two years later, they created their own games division. They got a lot of people who made some of the old wrestling games so interesting, such as the director of WWF No Mercy to actually come in as the director of this game as well. And they're doing really interesting things like handcrafted moves as well in the game which I thought was really cool because that's actually very different from WWE 2K where they're just doing mocap. And there's nothing wrong with mocap, but this is trying to be a more arcade experience versus simulation. Sports games and sports adjacent games now are all about simulation. That's pretty much what it is. But this is kind of trying to bring back the arcade era of gaming when it came to actual I would say wrestling games, but not just wrestling games, sports games in general. But as time went on, a lot of games became much more simulation focused and honestly a lot lazier in their development. You might look at a game like this and think, well, this is clearly a smaller wrestling game. It doesn't matter that much. It's not gonna push WWE, but something that's really cool about the competition around this is it actually already has. Now, not the game itself, but AEW as a company has pushed WWE a lot because actually four years ago when it was created, it changed the landscape of the industry. WCW went out of business, which was a different wrestling corporation because they were bought by WWE in 2001. And this is something that frustrates me because this is what happens with industry. If people can compete with a bigger entity, the bigger entity throws so much money at the owners of the smaller entity that they sell and the thing is dissolved or incorporated into the bigger one. So that's what usually happens, at least in the West, when something can compete. Either someone throws so much money at it that they just acquire it and destroy it so that they don't have to compete with it because that's cheaper for them, or what they do is they put them out of business by being petty. But with WCW, they were just purchased by WWE, and then there was no more competition at all. So when AEW showed up, you might think, oh, that doesn't matter at all, right? Well, something interesting is that wrestlers started getting paid better so that they wouldn't be jumping ship to this other brand by WWE. They had to actually pay them more what they were worth for their entertainment value. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because actual industry disruptors, they are important. They actually cause things in industries to get better. They actually cause competition to happen and people to thrive more. But something I think that's really cool about this game is they are going to have over 60 male and female fighters, each having unique movesets and signature skills. And they are looking to feature wrestling legends as well from the past, which is really interesting to see too. The also key difference between this game and the WWE games, other than just some of the creativity that they've shown off, is the fact that this is actually going to span multiple years and have DLC over the years instead of doing the yearly release cycle, which this is something that has really hurt gaming. The yearly release cycle is a cancer. It's very bad. What it does is it pushes companies to release the shoddiest product 
possible in the shortest amount of time they can so that they can get the sales next year. And it's getting to the point where even mainstream gaming journalism outlets that would usually shill for these things are even calling them out and giving them bad reviews because it's just gotten so bad. I mean, when it's at the point where people who are usually giving you eight or nine out of 10 just because you are a sports game are now giving you like a five or a six, you know it's gotten really bad because even they can't defend it. So I think it's really important to highlight when there is competition in industry and kind of get those things more seen and more out into the light so that if people want to support those things, they can. I understand that a lot of people maybe don't care about sports games or maybe don't care about particular types of games, but it's not really as much about that for me. It's about the fact that gaming overall has gotten very lazy in a lot of ways. So have comic books, so have movies, and there are definitely plenty of great things that come out of all those industries, but when something is able to come in, shake things up, and maybe push someone else to be better, more creative, and more filled with passion in order to actually try and compete, I think that's a good thing for everybody because it leads to better media. They know that you don't have options on things, so if you wanna play a certain type of game, too bad, we're the only game in town, play it or get out. Doesn't matter to us, we're gonna get millions of dollars anyway with or without you it's an attitude i'm very very sick of in all of these industries and it's why it's something i'd like to talk about a little bit more when there are good examples of this kind of thing coming up so if you enjoyed today's video please be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content i hope to see you in the next one we do also have a family of channels as well my wife jill has a channel magical jill that i'm on quite a bit of the time where we review collectibles or she talks about anime pokemon all kinds of other stuff we have a channel degenerate plays where me my friends my wife jill and others play through games together podcast style and talk and hang out and of course we do have our newer channel the king of creepy where i read and talk about horror as well we're starting to get into cryptids so i'm interested to see you over there as well all those links are in the description below have a fantastic day and as always everyone stay Shwag.